good friend Brent Wilsey uh, is in studio who uh, <coughs> handles your economic impact personally. Wil Wilsey Asset Management. Whether you have, well, in, in high times or low times, Brent, you can... Uh, yeah, you don't ever panic. I've known you for a long time. Nope. Well, don't since panic. Since you and I were way back over on KCEO back in 1997, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Calm, Gosh. cool, collected, oh, he is. no he's panic. Like we're just young kids back then. He's huh? medicated, but he's also yeah. calm, <laughs> cool, and collected. Good for him. Um, you know, we've got a couple of issues. U.S. economy not looking so good. Um, the hopes are fading to be uh, to have 2014 be better than 2013. Uh, with, is, that, is that because of what's going on in the real estate market? Is that what's going on? Is that just, or is that just a sentiment? Because I, I don't feel that way, but I keep right. on reading things about that. It, I mean, things aren't always going to be up. They're going to be up and down and so forth. And yeah, like yeah. today, uh, a positive we did see was new home sales. Uh, the index yeah. actually looked pretty good. I mean, uh, last month it was like 45. The estimate was 47. Came up 49. That's great because wow. the, up until now we have had kind of a right. muted response right. from right. the housing market. Of and course, let me throw in and, you know, devil's advocate, this is the time when everybody buys or sells a house. No, it's I think time that, to well, settle in I, for school. Don't is, you both point at me. Is that right? <laughs> your ass right now. Wait, I thought, I thought that was April and May. I thought uh, now it's kind of a slowdown time. Uh, May, I could be wrong. Well, well I guess those numbers in. are from May. They, they, they are from May, exactly. Thank and, you. And, and, and i got That's to point out, though, 50 is the, the break-even mark. So you got to get above 50. So we're yeah. still at 49, still okay. not a good mark there. Mm. But there's three things that make that up. Uh, the first one is is uh, you have the uh, current sales and future sales. Now, the current sales, is that that's just every but like, that's not new homes. That's all homes, correct? No, this is new homes. Oh, just new, new homes. homes. Yeah, We're only dealing with new homes. homes. Yeah, so this is new homes. Oh. Um, you have current sales and future sales. And, and then the other third factor, the third leg of that, is uh, traffic. Now, both current sales and future sales look very good, mm -hmm. but traffic, especially first-time buyers, was traffic. down. Yeah, people coming through to see the new homes. That's not what you. They oh, track that? Oh, oh, they tra oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. I had yeah. no idea wow. that they tracked that. How many customers coming through the door? And that's right. what that actually is. So that is down. No kidding. That's pulling the index down. Now, if that turns around a little bit this summer, where people go and want to see houses, that could turn that index positive above 50. So that's what we're looking at right now. I think so those numbers are false. A lot of times, realtors just go to an open house for the free cheese and, and snacks on those Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I agree. Well, that's <laughs> so, so I know. I mean, you could, it's like going to Costco when you're hungry. And then yeah. at lunchtime on a Saturday, you don't have to spend a nickel and you get yourself some nice salmon spread. And, and from there, go over to the new the home, next home, one, home you sales. You get about five of them and you right. are wasting And then you, go over, then you go over to the new home sales <laughs> and then maybe the beer tasting. At this. Yeah. Have you seen the supermarkets now that have actually a bar there? Yes. Where they're doing wine tasting? Have I? Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I get full of those and I buy the product at Costco. I'm not very good at doing that. Yeah, I'm not either. Yeah, if I taste something, I got like you know the full case. You mm. know, if you want to buy, if you want, if you want to eat some cheese, you you just go buy some cheese at the grocery store. If you want to right. build a house out of cheese, you go to yeah. Costco. Costco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a fifty-five gallon drum of shampoo. Take the whole up. shower. <laughs> <laughs> the um um, let's talk about you know we talked about Lululemon. Uh, yep. In fact, I even have it on my chart here from last week. We talked about that, and I wanted to I wanted to have a, a chat with you about that last time. You know, you know, individual stocks are always scary. Uh, Lululemon dropped uh, on the basis of their earnings. Uh, it was last Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Well, they had good earnings, but what they did, they downplayed the guidance going forward. Oh, I see. Um, okay. and, and that's what it was. And, and Lululemon, the reason why people are like, wow, it was like a high of 77, now it's around 37, 38. Great buy, bro. Jump into it. Just because something is cheap doesn't yeah, mean it's, it's gonna, not going to get, get cheaper. cheaper. Exactly. Right? exactly. That's <laughs> you, I think you taught me that several <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and that's when you got to look at the numbers, which is what I do here, because yeah. uh, they lowered their guidance. Now, their they're 2015 uh, earnings are dollar seventy eight. This is the estimate. Two thousand six. So earnings per share is important because you know uh, the number we like to see earnings per share. Is there even an average number? Is that twenty five still that I, number? I, or is it ten? Well, is it well 15 no, no. Now? I like to buy a company when it's at ten to twelve times forward earnings. Okay. I will really? sell that company. Yeah, no, it's sixteen and a half times earnings. That's when I sell and get out. I should write this stuff down. Do you have a book or anything? You I know can just what? Pick I know. Up? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. Just go to his yeah, website. Right. We'll see asset management. I'm so bad. And then call him. Yeah. yeah okay. Maybe yeah, we can trade like investment secrets for your designer secrets. Yeah. Because pretty fantastic. Yeah, I want that robe. Yeah, yeah. Today's your day. Take that sports robe. <laughs> All right, wear it. So, get in line. But when I did um, <laughs> when I did the uh, the Ford PE on Lululemon right now, it's eighteen point three. So well above right sell it at, let alone buy it at. Right. Now there's something else you want to look at too, Lululemon, and, and, and I look yeah, at things. I'll say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's hats off to that guy, <laughs> man. Right? Well, him Kiter, the guy, Kiter, Kiter, Kiter. Him and the guy who invented dolphin shorts, right? right. Wow. I'm talking numbers. I know what you're talking about, but, but uh, yeah. the numbers. It, is one thing that stood out for me, which you may or may not know. It's called a quick ratio. And a quick ratio is something that shows how much liquidity the company has. A quick ratio, quick, quick quick ratio, ratio. easy to say, yeah. is, is their short-term cash investment versus their liabilities. Well, it's mm -hmm. 7.6 for the company versus 1.2. What does that tell me? It tells no, me to me, it tells me nothing. Well, I'm going I'm yeah, to teach you what it's going to do. I have no idea where that um, is. It tells me that the company has a lot of liquidity. Now, either management is being very lazy and mm. not investing their cash and just not paying attention to it, or they could be saying, let's build up our cash position 
because we want to be taken over. Okay. Really? Yeah, yes, that is one thing we look at. Now, wow, their, that's their cash good. last year was like uh, 583 million. Yeah. It's now 762 million. And cash flow, they made about 70 million this quarter, 250 million last quarter. They're a very cash flow so rich company. So someone buys you then for like uh, a lot, uh, they get that money too? Exactly. They, they get, get money. the money yes, too. Yes, yeah. So that's what you're looking at. Like, we can buy this company and they have no debt. So it, it is a pretty good wow. deal. But right now they're still too rich. But watch the company because it is a good product. A lot of women like it. Um, it is a you know good product, mm -hmm. but it's still expensive. So I'm telling people, keep watching it. Don't jump in yet. It's not on sale. Right. Um, but there are some potentials down the road with this company. Okay, so let's talk about on sale because for you to for you to think a company is on sale, and there's a couple examples that we've used in the past. Starbucks was one of them. We knew it's a great company. Mm -hmm. It's not going anywhere. The stock died, and that's one of those things. Oh, we should buy this low. Right. You know. You know. Here's another one. Lululemon probably not going anywhere for a while. I, although I, although I don't think it's as strong as a Starbucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. When 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 is the companies on sale? Uh, mantra come into your mind? Like, in other words, I got to get in now, right. or I'll be missing Blue an light special or, yeah, or, or market. Right, or I'll be thing. missing right. an opportunity. When we come back, I want to talk about sure, that. Sure, sure. Okay, <laughs> because that's uh, that's how you do that, by the way. I got to wait. Because they're staying. They're going to stay there. Can you, yeah. So, I, honestly, because there, there's, there's, you know, when Brent Wilsey says, okay, now I got to get in because I'm going to miss opportunity, he's a patient man, unlike the rest of us. So, you want to listen to what his definition of on sale is. <laughs> All right, Brent Wilsey in studio with us uh, from Wilsey Asset Management. Talking a little bit about uh, talking a little about Lululemon and uh, yeah. and single stocks and uh, and why sometimes it's you should just avoid individual <laughs> stocks like and Brett would say why you should always avoid individual stocks. Brett, what's going on with Lululemon? You know, Lululemon uh, at the end of, at the end of the day, Lululemon certainly seems like oh my gosh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not going anywhere. It's cheap. Oh my goodness, I you know it's it's another it's another uh, you know Calvin Klein jeans. It's another yep. uh, mm -hmm. Dolphin shorts. And boy, is it. Um, and of course, you got companies like Starbucks that aren't going to ever go anywhere. And those things drop. What is you know when does it turn into a thing where you have got to get into a stock? It's so cheap and it looks so attractive that you feel it's going to be you're going to miss an opportunity if we don't jump in uh, to something. Does that ever happen to you? Let, let me summarize that for you. And probably even Rusty will say, yeah, that makes sense. When everybody else hates it, that's when I love it. That's that's the whole thing. Buy straw yeah. hats in the winter, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. And th and that's the. And you still got to check the numbers and stuff. But sure. still, I mean, when people hate it, I mean, yeah. we, we've done that. Gosh, we sold a company that we held for five years, made a 200% profit on it. Back then, we bought it five years ago. Everybody hated it. Like, oh, they're not going to do anything. Yeah, right. We sold it. Nobody loves it, and we're getting out of it. So when people love it, we get out. When people hate it, we get in. So there's, always, there's always that DJ that says, you know, these Beatles are just nothing. They're flash, yep. flash in the pan. Right. right. And there right. were those types. Right, right. <laughs> Elvis. And you, <laughs> and you gotta check the numbers, make sure the numbers are right. I right, mean, right. Again, it's very easy with the companies because if their earnings are there, they got a good strong balance sheet and not a lot of debt, you know, good cash, cash flow. Yeah. That's when the street hates it and we love it. Do you have any emotion that goes into it? Do you, are you just so cold hearted that you just don't you just all facts or do you ever go, gosh, I love this company. Yeah. There's something you, neat you, about it. I know, know the numbers are coming at me wrong, but <laughs> oh, I love Lululemons or whatever. Yeah, the thing about Brent is he doesn't fall in love with the stock. Know, you know, right. Much like you. Right. You want to marry it, it's take all it to I the want. movies. Yeah. I'll tell you one stock I would fall in love with yeah. uh, is uh, if you go public with your fashion design. With Russ, yeah, Russ is, well, yeah. <laughs> well, we all know what happened to Russ's tequila. Lulu pumpkin. So so um is there, you know, what, what's the what's that point? Where, where does it get to that point of Lulu? Is, is Lululemon out of favor right now? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Lululemon again selling it to 18 times forward earnings. That's just too expensive. I mean, I, I either mm. want to see the earnings rise going forward, which could happen. And again, be patient. Six, 12 months down the road, mm -hmm. or the stock falls further because people just hate it. Like, oh, you know, their their pants are stretching too much. Nobody likes them anymore. <laughs> then we find the stock trading at 10, 12 times earnings. That's when like say, hey, here's a company with no yeah. no debt, uh, good cash flow, trading at 12 times earnings. Let's buy that company and see where it stands 18 months from now. Yeah, if they so, come out with a line of Spanx type of a material, I think more women will buy in. You talking about the robe or the no the, no the Lulu? <laughs> okay, the Lulu. I'm just checking both things there. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about let's talk about uh, millionaires real quick and the generation called millenn millennials millennials, which is the. You know, they, would call, they call those guys Gen Z, but, it, you know, remember Gen, Gen X was out there. They're calling right. them Gen Z. They're actually, they're millennials. Because like, yes. if we ever get to the Z, then we're, the human race is over. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, we do that. Z one, maybe. But, but they're not spending where we think. What does that no, mean? No, and, and that's so important. That's why I looked at this, because it's important to know when you invest, where are people spending. Now, first of all, and this uh, survey is provided by Shulman Research uh, Center, 62%, uh, and this was not a surprise, of millionaires uh, love Amazon. That's their first mm -hmm. pick. Okay. I'm going to ask Rusty, what do you think their second pick is? If you're a millionaire, because I know you're a millionaire, so where, where's your second yeah. pick? Yeah, I'm going Apple. Apple. Mm, nope. I'm going. Uh, I'd say I would say something like Apple, Google, Google no. something like that. Uh, uh, you're wait. sitting down. Caterpillar. Nope. You're sitting down. Oh, okay. All right. Walmart. Oh. Well, yes. WMT. Why Walmart? Yeah. Well, because I got. I, 
I love shopping at Walmart. I get right. great deals. A lot of millionaires like to get good, good yeah. deals. Okay, yeah. I get them. Walmart. So Walmart was a, a the big deal. surprise. Here. Wow. Another big surprise was millennials. Their preferred store. Uh, you think they are all on the internet? That's mm-hmm. what we're hearing, right? All right. All right. Fifty-two percent of them say no. I want to go into that store yeah. and actually buy stuff. So Starbucks? Again, no. Starbucks? Well, <laughs> that's I mean, that's interesting a because I because I buy almost everything online. I mean, I, I, well, you're much older than the millennials. Is that, but I know. But does that, <laughs> yeah. is that, but does that <laughs> indicate lazy. that guys like our age would rather shop online? Um, well, what it kind of indicates because we keep hearing, oh, the mall is going to be gone, the yeah, store's right. going to be gone, sure. and so forth. So this shows us that maybe that direction is not there because we're still social beings. We right. still like yeah. going whether you're 50 or whether you're you're 18. And with clothing, I like trying it on before I go. Right. I like looking at, touching the material. He's he's getting boxes yeah. every other day. There's a new shirt, there's a new pants, a new belt. I'm like, right. yeah, I, I can't stand trying the crap. And I gotta tell you, the biggest surprise to me uh, for millennials, their their second favorite place to shop. Yeah. Yeah. Starbucks. Uh, oh, here we got to do. I'm this. I'm gonna put you on the spot again. This. Um, uh, some sort of clothing store. You'll never get it. Yeah. Oh, it is a clothing store. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, sounds it's like act it out for me. It's where my grandmother used to go. I thought, and I, and again, their sales doing great and so forth. Macy's. 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 Yeah. yeah. Kind of another bargain type yeah, of a well, ish. It's just like I always thought Macy's was like my grandmother's store. Yeah, I, it was. You know, you, you you don't like Nordstrom's is hot and so forth. Yeah. But the millennials, they're looking at different things, and that's why it's so important to look at this research because you could be thinking the complete wrong thing, investing off right. of that and saying, wait a minute, yeah. stores are not closing. Macy's sales are doing extremely well. The company's doing extremely well. People are shopping there. Millennials are hmm. shopping there. So very important to understand what is going on. I love reading stuff. That's what Good I Good stuff. Yeah. Brent, thank you so much. You know, when, you, when you come back later this week, and yes, we're booking you later this week, uh, we're going to talk about the dollar hitting a, yes. hitting a four-month low and why you, know, why you care about a devalued dollar. I think that's probably the best lesson we can learn. Look at his website. We'll see assetmanagement.com and, uh, and, of course, visit his website, and he can, uh, he can take you through the, uh, the whole process of investing and so on mm-hmm. and so forth.